Why is microeconomics important? Microeconomics is fundamental in that it helps us understand how perfectly rational decision makers would make choices. But, I hear you howl, perfectly rational individuals don't exist. Perfect competition is impossible. Yes and no. First of all, there are situations in which microeconomic models work reasonably well, namely whenever there is a simple and intuitive real-world equivalent to a convex utility function. For example, when the decision mostly has to do with monetary incentives and there is no uncertainty over future events, you can expect firms to actually behave in a payoff-maximizing fashion. Game theory has very prolific applications in competition theory and antitrust regulation, it highlights what sort of incentives can push two firms to collude. But what about all the other cases? Are we wasting our time when studying consumer theory? The example above still doesn't explain why in theory of the firm we care about perfect competition. The more subtle importance of microeconomics is epistemological, I. E. It has to do with the very reason and purpose of economics. A professor of mine once said that economics is the study of how we can get people together to cooperate productively. While this is in no way a canonical or rigorous definition, it highlights the fundamental reason of why we study economics, we study economics to make the world better off, or more precisely to be able to tell what forms of cooperation yield improvements to the welfare of the inhabitants of Earth and hopefully to find the best among these desirable forms of cooperation. We know what a perfectly competitive market would look like, and we know that perfect competition maximizes social welfare, an unambiguously desirable result. Hence, we can compare the outcomes of different competition policies and select the one that gets us closer to the desirable, yet only theoretical, situation. When we focus on consumer theory, we look at what a rational consumer would choose and then investigate whether people actually behave accordingly. If they don't, we investigate why. We then pass the ball to behavioral economists who will attempt to put order in the mess and give us a rigorous model that explains the discrepancies between micro-predictions and observed outcomes. When we study game theory, and its now fully grown daughter and granddaughter, contract theory and mechanism design, we try to describe situations in which monetary or utility incentives shape strategic interactions between separate decision makers. Contract theory then tries to tweak the incentive structure to obtain an outcome that is desirable for all players involved. Mechanism design, finally, takes a step further and asks whether we can tweak the entire structure of the game, which in game theory and contract theory is taken as given, to achieve a desired outcome. The latter is evidently taking the position of a government or regulating authority that seeks to either promote a desirable action or disincentive an undesired one. For example, it is possible to devise a tax audit structure that, without increasing funding to the tax authority, reduces tax evasion to an arbitrarily low level. So, the importance of microeconomics is both that it can tell us how decision makers will behave and that it tells us how it would be optimal to behave and perhaps how we can obtain a desirable outcome by changing the rules of the game. Microeconomics occupies a vital place in economics and it has both theoretical and practical importance. It is highly helpful in the formulation of economic policies that will promote the welfare of the masses. Till recently, especially before Keynesian revolution, the body of economics consisted mainly of microeconomics. In spite of the popularity of macroeconomics these days, microeconomics retains its importance, theoretical as well as practical. It is microeconomics that tells us how a free market economy with its millions of consumers and producers work to decide about the allocation of productive resources among the thousands of goods and services. The greatest of these is depth and understanding of how a free private enterprise economy operates. Further, it tells us how the goods and services produced are distributed among the various people for consumption, through price or market mechanism. It shows how the relative prices of various products and factors are formed, that is, why the price of cloth is what it is and why the wages of an engineer are what they are and so on. Moreover, as described above, microeconomic theory explains the conditions of efficiency in consumption and production and highlights the factors which are responsible for the departure from the efficiency or economic optimum. On the basis of this, microeconomic theory suggests suitable policies to promote economic efficiency and welfare of the people. 
Thus, not only does microeconomic theory describe the actual operation of the economy, it has also a normative role in that it suggests policies to eradicate inefficiency from the economic system so as to maximize the satisfaction or welfare of the people.